Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater. Starring Ann Baxter and Phil Harris in You're My Everything. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. I wonder how many of you recall when the billboards first carried huge advertisements for motion pictures reading All Talking, All Singing. Yes, the talking picture was here to stay. And with it came new stars, actors who could not only act, but talk and sing and dance. Our play tonight, You're My Everything, is a story of those years. It's a musical, a comedy and a drama all in one, as it tells the love story of a song and dance man and an actress. As our stars of this 20th Century Fox screen hit, we have Anne Baxter in her original role of the actress and Phil Harris playing the part of the song and dance man in You're My Everything. And of course, Lux Flakes can be your everything when it comes to wonderful washing results. Years and fashions come and go, but Lux Flakes remains on top as the choice of discriminating housewives. Now, here's You're My Everything, starring Ann Baxter as Hannah and Phil Harris as Tim. <laughs> Boston, the 1920s. At the Belmont Theater, a matinee performance is underway. And for the fifth time in two weeks, a pretty young lady named Hannah Adams is in the audience. Believe me, the show isn't that good. But there's an affable young man on the stage named Here Tim O'Connor. See how it goes down on the heels, up on the toes. That's the way to do the varsity drag. Hotter than hot, newer than new, meaner than mean, bluer than blue, gets as much applause as waving a flag. You can pass many a class, whether you're dumb or wise. If you all answer the call when your professor cries, everybody down on the heels, up on the toes, stay after school, learn how it goes, everybody do the varsity drag. Adams again, waiting for the rain to let up. Achoo! Gesundheit. Oh. I, I only said Gesundheit. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you, Mr. O'Connor. You know me? Oh, no. No, no, I don't, but I, I just saw the show, and I, I think you're... I think it's simply... Achoo! You should have brought your umbrella. Yes. Look, speaking of umbrellas, do you know of a place around here where a fella can get a good steak dinner? No, not, not exactly. Maybe some nice seafood, spaghetti even. Anything as long as it isn't baked beans. Baked beans? Well, not that I got anything against your famous Boston baked beans. In fact, I'm a great admirer of beans. I regard them as the bulwark of our civilization. But after three weeks of a steady diet... <laughs> hey, you better go home and soak your feet in a hot mustard bath. Well, be nice seeing you. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, I do know a place where they serve a good home-cooked dinner. Oh? I I'll be glad to show you if you like. I like. Well, I I'm going in that direction. There's no sign of a taxi. Is it very far? Oh, not if you don't mind walking. It's, uh, it's in Louisburg Square. Louisburg Square? Oh, but I know a shortcut. This way, Mr. O'Connor. Hey, look, uh, are you sure there's a place around here to eat? This doesn't look much like a restaurant neighborhood. Where are we, anyway? Louisburg. You mean we're not even in Boston? No, I mean this is Louisburg Square. Oh. Ritzy, huh? Well, the people who live here think this is just about all there is to Boston. Yeah. Look, uh, how much further is this restaurant? Well, uh, this is it, right here. This? But this looks like somebody's house. Hey, kind of expensive, huh? Oh, no, 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 isn't it all expensive, but... Well, to tell you the truth... 
Oh. Well, aren't you coming in? Oh, good evening, Father. Good evening, dear. Father. Uh, uh, Father, this is Mr. O'Connor. Mr. O'Connor? Uh, my, my, my father, uh, Professor Adams. Uh, nice to know you, Professor Adams. Uh, Mr. O'Connor is, uh, having dinner with us tonight, Father. Really? Well, splendid, splendid. Uh, come in, Mr. O'Connor. Thank you, sir. Now, if you let me have your hat. Uh, tell Mother I'll be right in, Hannah. Hmm. You know, this joint looks okay. Oh, good evening, Mother. Good evening, dear. Mother, this is Mr. O'Connor. He's going to have dinner with us. Oh? Well, we're very happy to have you, Mr. O'Connor. Thank you. It's very nice to be here. Father, be right in. Yes, dear. <clears throat> oh, oh, excuse me. And this is my Aunt Jane from Salem. Where the witches come from. Good evening, young man. Good evening. Uh, will you uh, excuse me for a moment? I'll be right back. Uh, don't be long, dear. Dinner's almost ready. Oh, uh, tell Elizabeth to set another place. Yes, Mother. Well, Mr. O'Connor, did you go to the symphony this afternoon, too? Symphony? Oh, yes, that's where Hannah's been. Didn't she tell you? No, she, she didn't mention it. That's strange. The symphony seems to be the only thing Hannah's interested in lately. As a matter of fact, Mr. O'Connor, I am the only unmusical one in the entire family. Like General Grant, I know only two tunes. One is Yankee Doodle, and the other one isn't. <laughs> there. You see, I... I told you I wouldn't be long. We were just about to discuss music, dear. Yes, your mother and I were wondering how you enjoyed the symphony this afternoon. Oh. She was surprised that you hadn't mentioned it. Perhaps Hannah didn't mention it because she wasn't there. Wasn't there? Perhaps she was at the Belmont Theater again. Ah, uh, Jane, how did you know? Well, I'm not exactly a recluse. I saw you there last Saturday ogling Mr. O'Connor here along with the rest of the flappers. No kidding. How'd you like the show? Young man, you're a guest in my brother's house. I prefer not to answer that. <laughs> so, uh, you're an actor, Mr. O'Connor. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that, sir. He's what they call a hoofer. Uh, how, how interesting. Well, we, we were just standing there, and Mr. O'Connor asked me if I knew a place where he could get a good steak. Of and... what, dear? Well, it was raining, Mrs. Adams. You see, and I was... he said he was tired of eating... And you know how it is in a strange town. And besides, Mother, you're always talking about Boston hospitality, and I, I just thought it would be nice to bring him home. Oh, yes, dear, of course, but well, I... Well, I suppose I ought to apologize, Mrs. Adams, but you see, I really thought that this was a restaurant. A restaurant? Yeah. Well, it's quite all right, I suppose. Oh, uh, yes, indeed. Uh, glad to have you. Dinner is served, Mrs. Adams. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. This way, Mr. O'Connor, and I do hope you like Boston baked beans. B beans? <laughs> oh, mother. Uh, yes, dear? Oh, nothing, I guess. I'm sorry, Professor, to eat and run, but you know how it is. The show must go on. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. And thanks for a very nice dinner. Oh, I'm so glad you could come. Oh, uh, I had a hat, didn't I? It's right here, Mr. O'Connor. Oh, oh, thank you. Well, goodbye, Mr. O'Connor. Goodbye. Uh, your hat, it's, uh, it's still a little damp. Yeah, thanks. Hey, uh, would you step outside for a minute? I want to give you a piece of advice. Uh, advice? Oh, look, it stopped raining. In the future, you better be careful, see? I mean, about the kinds of guys you pick up. Oh. First thing you know, you're going to bump into one of them cads that's going to try to date you up for lunch tomorrow, and you know what that sort of thing leads to. Well, will you? Uh, well, will I what? Have lunch with me tomorrow. Oh, but I couldn't possibly do that. What time? Twelve o'clock. Oh, I don't think my mother would like it. Where? Copley Plaza. Oh, yeah, and another thing. You better watch your step or one of those fresh guys might even lose his head and try to kiss you goodnight. Like this. Oh, thank you for warning me. Yeah, I feel better now. <laughs> Good night, Hannah. Good night, Tim. You just can't have lunch with me and then rush right off. Besides, I have a surprise for you. Come on, we're going in the store. The music store? What for? You never knew I made a phonograph record, did you? Tim! Well, it's nothing much, really. It's 
Just a record. Oh, I can't wait to buy it. What song did you sing? Now, take it easy. Maybe they don't even carry well, it. Maybe they're all sold out. <laughs> yeah, well, let's find out, huh? How do you like it? Terrific, huh? That's the only record I ever made. Oh, it's wonderful, but I, I can't tell which, uh, oh, which one of the singers is you. Well, keep your shirt on. I'll tell you when. Oh, look, uh, that corsage. Be sure and put it in the icebox when you get home, and then you can wear it again when we go to dinner tonight. Oh, Tim, I can't. We always go to Uncle Edward's Thursday nights. Uncle Edward's? Oh, we've been going to Uncle Edward's every Thursday night for years. Well, just think of what a relief it'll be for Uncle Edward when you don't show up. <laughs> I'll pick you up at 6.30. Oh, but I can't, Tim. I shouldn't really. I hey, don't... wait a minute. Here it comes. This is me. Now. Because I love you. Well, how'd you like me? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I'd do that same phrase solo again a little later on. Hey, now about tonight. Oh, oh, Tim, please let me listen. I want to hear you again. Yeah. I can't understand why this record didn't sell better. Tim, hadn't you better go now? Your taxi's waiting. Okay. Oh, uh, I left a ticket at the theater for you for tomorrow's matinee. I won't be there tomorrow, Tim. What do you mean you won't be there? Do you know that I've seen you every day for ten days? Yeah. But tomorrow's our last matinee. We're, we're closing Saturday night. I, I just think we shouldn't see each other again. Hey, what is this? Well, you said yourself it can't mean anything, that we live in two different worlds. Well, yes, we do. But I don't see why we can't go on seeing each other as long as I'm here. I'd rather not, Tim. Then you want this to, to be goodbye? Well, isn't it? Will you kiss me goodnight? If you want me to. I don't suppose I have to tell you how swell it's been knowing you and... Goodbye, Tim. Yeah. So long, Hannah. Aunt Jane? Well? I think it was very nice of you inviting me here for afternoon tea, but... Uh... Speak up, Hannah. What are you trying to say? Well, you keep looking around as if you're expecting somebody else. I most certainly am. And there he is. Oh, no. No. The Mrs. Adams, I presume. Good afternoon. Oh, Tim. I was beginning to think you hadn't got my note. Carrying it right here next to my heart. Hiya, Hannah. Well, I'm fine, but I... Well, I suppose you're wondering what this is all about. Can't shoot a man for wondering. Very well, Mr. O'Connor. Just what are your intentions toward my niece? <gasps> Aunt Jane! My what? You've been seeing her constantly. Well, up until night before last... Either your intentions are honorable or they aren't. Certainly they're honorable, but I never... But you don't want to marry her. Oh, Aunt Jane, I... Yes or no? Well, I don't know. That is, not exactly... Uh, not exactly? I... No, I guess I didn't mean not exactly. I, 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 before I... you go into any highfalutin notions, young man, let me tell you something about this girl. She's an 11th generation Bostonian. Seven of our male ancestors in a straight line, including the two that came over on the Mayflower, were ministers of the gospel. The other four were professors of Greek at Harvard. Oh, Harvard, huh? Oh, Aunt Jane, he's not interested in that. Look at her. Any fool can see she was cut out to marry a man of family and position. Well, that's exactly what I told her. And yet you deliberately set out to make this child fall in love with you. Now, wait a minute. Maybe my family don't have a lot of money and never learned Greek, but they've always been pretty swell people and a lot of fun. Say, just who do you think you are, anyway? <laughs> Young man, I like you. You may not have any blue blood in you, but at least you've got blood. <gasps> how, could you, how could you do such a horrid thing? Well, Hannah, if it's of any interest to you, I think you should marry him. Huh? Marry him? After what you've said? Oh, for heaven's sake, we're talking about something important. Your whole life. What difference does it make how it's settled as long as it's settled? Well? Well, don't you think Hannah's mother and father might have something to say about this? Don't worry. They'll have plenty to say. But make up your minds if you've got any. I'm going to powder my nose. You can both end up old maids as far as I'm concerned. 
Oh, how could she say such things? I'm not worried about her. The point she is... She had no right to. You don't have to marry me. I don't have to marry anybody. Besides, what makes her think I'd marry you? I wouldn't marry oh, you now. Oh, be quiet. I'm trying to think. Well, I wouldn't any more marry you than, than you'd marry me. You know how much I make a week? Wait till I get Aunt Jane home telling me we were going to have tea when all the while well, she how was... am I supposed to support a wife? Steak, 30 cents a pound? <laughs> Eggs, 22 cents a dozen? What? Butter? Then I'd have to pay your railroad fare, your hotel bill. What did you bills. say? I said it wouldn't be fair to ask any girl to live on what I make. Oh, but I wouldn't cost much. Why, the laundry alone. Now, if we're traveling, we'd well, have I'd to... I'd do the laundry, and I could learn to cook, and as of far as... Of course, there's always a chance they might be able to use you in the chorus. Me? On the stage? What's the matter with the stage? Well, nothing, only I can't sing or dance or... What's that got to do with being a chorus girl? <laughs> Besides, you... You don't love me. Who said I didn't? Well, you certainly never said you did. Oh, for the love of Mike. Do you think I'd have wasted all this time if I didn't love you? But you never well, said... Well, haven't you got eyes? Can't you see that I love you? Yes, can't you see? It's written all over him. Oh. <laughs> hey, Aunt Jane, you know something? You're a swell gal. I agree with you. <laughs> and to prove it, I've just arranged your wedding for you. I've even ordered the ring and the flowers. Oh, Aunt Jane, I... I just don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just go ahead and kiss the man. Yeah, just go ahead and kiss that man. Tim. Well, that's more like it. I was afraid I'd have to do that for you, too. Hmm. Hannah. That's enough. Hannah. Why, Hannah Adams. <laughs> Before our stars return with Act Two of You're My Everything, here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter, with the Lux Movie News of the Week. I've just seen a picture that makes me want to stand up and cheer and cry and see it all over again. Darrell F. Zanuck was inspired by the famous Marine hymn to title his production for 20th Century Fox, The Halls of Montezuma. The story is dramatic and tragic, about a platoon of Marines on a Japanese-held island who risk almost certain death to carry out an operation that will ensure the success of a general attack. Where is the love interest? In love of country that overbalances fear, inspires the men with hope and courage. Richard Widmark is the lieutenant in charge who demonstrates the importance of taking prisoners instead of shooting them. How were the battle scenes filmed? Well, they were actually shot during the giant uh, Marine and Navy war games held in May at Aliso Beach. A beach location sounds like a pretty good assignment for most of the players. Oh, it was. Richard Widmark rented a house there for his wife, Jean, and their little daughter, Anne, while he was working on the halls of Montezuma. Smart beach resorts call for so many clothes changes, their, their bags must have been bursting. Well, Mrs. Widmark took less than you think, because she's a Lux fan. Lux is a must for all the washables in her wardrobe, from play clothes for the beach to sheer formals for evening. Little Anne wears only Luxables. They're so practical for everything from sunsuits to party dresses. Jean is bringing her up to be a luxe girl, just like Hollywood's best-dressed screen stars. Yes, Hollywood screen stars, smart women everywhere, have that luxe look. That nice as new look fine washables have when they always get gentle luxe care. It's a fact, proved by repeated washing tests, that luxe care keeps colors lovely up to three times as long. Experimenting with wrong washing methods is one of the surest ways to invite fading. Gentle Lux Care is so quick, so easy, so safe. It keeps the most delicate colors lovely as new far longer, wherever you are. No other soap, no other way of washing does more for colors. Why don't you do as Hollywood's famous do? Use Lux Flakes for your blouses, dresses, sweaters, the children's things too. Get a big box of Lux tomorrow and give all your family's nice things that lovely Lux look. Now, here's our producer, William Keeley. Act two of You're My Everything, starring Ann Baxter as Hannah and Phil Harris as Tim. <laughs> of course, of chorus girls who get married and go into society. 
But how many society girls have you heard of who get married and go into the chorus? That's exactly what our Hannah has done to the consternation of Boston and the confusion of the chorus. Well, anyway, Hannah is very nice to look at and the show's doing fine. It's moved to Chicago now, and tonight, backstage, Tim's brought someone into the dressing room. Well, go ahead, Mr. Flum. Step right up and tell my little bride why you're here. Well, Mrs. O'Connor, how would you like to go to Hollywood? Hollywood? Well, what would we do in Hollywood? Believe it or not, baby, Mr. Flum is a talent scout, and he seems to think this O'Connor guy might do pretty good in the cinema. You? In the movies? Not bad, huh? Have a little swimming pool running around the house and some of them <laughs> little old diamond bracelets climbing up your arm. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. We'll pay all expenses during the test, Mrs. O'Connor. Sure, and if worse comes to worse, we could always starve. Oh, I'm not worried about that, darling. You'll be as good as anybody they've got out there. Better. Why, I'll be bigger than Valentino and Tom Mix rolled into one. I'll be another Rin Tin Tin. <laughs> uh, incidentally, we're leaving Sunday night. Sunday night? Then it's all set, Mrs. O'Connor. I can wire the coast. You heard him, Mr. Flum. I guess we're going to Hollywood. <laughs> Okay, boys, get ready. Lights and cameras for the O'Connor test. I'm all set, Mr. Blanton. You're ready for me, huh? Clear the set, everybody. Oh, Mrs. O'Connor. Oh, yes? If you'll just wait over there, please. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, you all right, old boy? Oh, me? Sure, sure, but uh, you're still going to tell me what to do, aren't you? Naturally, old bean. I am a director, you know. All right, boys, we're ready. Music, camera. Just stand there, Mr. O'Connor. That's it. Now then, you reach for your cigarettes. Nonchalance, old boy. Man of the world, you know. Okay, Bert. Okay, Mr. Blanton. Now light the cigarette. That's it. Now you toss the match away and exhale. Exhale, old boy. Blow the smoke out slowly. In, in curls, I think. How's that, Bert? All real swell curls, Mr. Blanton. <laughs> A little more curly, if you can. Ah, good. Oh, very, very, very good. That's it, Bert. Cut. You, you mean that's all? Dear boy, I'll tell you when you're through. Oh, sorry. Now, the important thing is your romantic quality. Do you suppose you could hold a woman in your arms? Could you kiss her? I haven't had any complaints lately. <laughs> now, let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, oh, uh, could I borrow you for a moment, darling? Me? Well... Oh, Mr. Blanton, but I couldn't. I, Nonsense. I... All you have to do is stand next to him. I'm not interested in you, only in him, his reactions. Now, dear boy, may I be you for a moment? Sure, if you can stand it. <laughs> then watch me. Ready, Mrs. O'Connor? Mm-hmm. Darling, I adore you. You're my very life. Tell me. Tell me that you love me, too. Achoo! Oh, for goodness sake. Why? <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Blanton. I just couldn't help it. Y your mustache. Oh, go ahead, Mr. O'Connor. Try to make love to her. All right, Bert. Camera, music. Your arms, Mr. O'Connor. Put your arms around her. Yeah, yeah, but what do I say? Cut! <laughs> Dear boy, you can say anything you wish. On the stage, you have your speaking voice, your singing voice, but motion pictures neither talk nor sing. It's how you look. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Try it again, Bert. Hey, rolling, boss. Oh, I hope I don't sneeze again, darling. What are you trying to do? Wreck my career just when I'm learning how to be a great lover? <laughs> now kiss her hand. The wrist. The forearm. I suppose you think I like to take you into my arms like this and kiss you and tell you that I'm the luckiest guy that ever walked home with a silly little flapper who didn't have any more brains than to pick up a hungry hoofer. Are you sorry I did? Sure, I'm sorry. So sorry that I adore you. Oh, I adore you too, great lover. Keep going, old boy. Expression, expression. <laughs> well, then kiss me, will you, and make Blanton happy. That's it. Cut, cut. That's all, boy. Save the lights. <laughs> this is a screen test. We have your address, old boy. You'll hear from us one way or another. Thanks for your help, Mrs. O'Connor. <laughs> Darling, now may I laugh? You do and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Moses, just tell me, what am I doing here? <laughs> Tim? Tim, is 
that you? Well, how was it? How did they like it? Only sensational, honey. And to quote Mr. Mercer... Well, who's Mr. Mercer? Merely the head of the studio, you dumbbell. Oh, oh, yes. Well, now, when do you start work? Well, that's the funny part. I don't. Oh, but you just said... Sure, that... only it seems that they weren't talking about me, baby. It's you. Me? With your puss, Mrs. O'Connor, I'm reliably informed that within six months, half the babies in America will be named after you. Oh, Tim, please, be serious. And what's more, they've got a part right now that's just been crying for somebody like you, somebody different. Mr. Mercer personally guarantees it'll make you a star overnight. But they're crazy, Tim. I won't let them do this to you. And I'm not an actress, I... A personality, and that's exactly what they want in pictures. You don't have to act. No one ever hears your voice. All you have to do is just make those faces. I won't do it. I won't let them treat you like this. Now, wait a minute. Nobody's doing anything to me. I'm a hoofer. I can get all the jobs I want. Now, look, you go in there and potted your nose because you're going back to that studio and you're going to sign a contract for more dough than... than, than... Now, what's the matter? Tim, I can't do it. Why can't you do it? Well, well, I... I'm going to have a baby. A baby? No. Are you kidding? Oh, why didn't you tell me before? Well, I... I was afraid you might not want one. Want one? Want a baby? Why, I wouldn't take a billion bucks for this. At least a million. Oh, where's that telephone? Tim, what are you going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to call my folks. I'm going to call your folks. I'm going to... Hey, look at me in that mirror, honey. Hiya, Papa. <laughs> yeah, that's me old dad. Hello, hello, operator. Tim, please, wait a minute. Hey, now look, you just tell me when it's going to be, honey. That's just it. I don't expect it for years yet. You know, years? <laughs> I, I didn't mean I was going to have a baby now. I mean, I, I just meant I hoped to have one sometime in the next few years. I'm, I'm sorry. So you want to play, huh? Now, Tim... Tim, I only meant that I... I'll I, teach you to play no. gags on if me. If you tickle come me... Come over I, here. I, Tim, no. Come over here. I only meant if I... I said, come over here. Stop. No, don't get that. You're going to get out of that studio. Do you hear me? I don't want to be in movies. You don't, huh? I'll ask you once more. That's oh, all I'm going to... Yes, I'll go, Tim. Stop it's... tickling me. I'll do anything. I'll even go in the movies. Well, then, Mrs. O'Connor, let's away. Oh. Henry Mercer finds new star for Superior Pictures. Hannah Adams, hailed by studio as Discovery of Year. Mercer to star Hannah Adams in the heart of a co-ed. Well, what are you so worried about, baby? The picture's a big success. You're a star, just like Mercer said you'd be. Oh, but Tim, the heart of a co-ed. Well, you saw it. Only 12 times. But it's so silly. What's silly about it? The people love it. What's silly about it? The very first shot, there I am out in the backyard hanging up a pair of bloomers. Well? Then Harold drives by and sees me. Did you see what Blanton made me do? First I wave like this, then I wave like that, then I pat my hair, then I wave again. And what happens? A title flashes on the screen, it says, Yoo-hoo! Oh, <laughs> Tim, really? <laughs> when do you start the next epic? The day after tomorrow. Superior Pictures present Hannah Adams, America's hot child girl in... In flaming flappers. Think you can start it without me, honey? Tim, then you've heard from Chicago. Yeah, it's a nightclub job. Two weeks guarantee. You're accepting it, aren't you? Baby, we've been all through that. Oh, I know. I know. You've got to accept it. You can't just sit around here doing nothing while There's I... There's one thing I'm sure of, though. As soon as those two weeks are up, I'm coming right back. Because, honey, I can't take it. Me in Chicago and... And you out here? And then what, darling? Then I'll hang around a while until I get sick and tired of you, and then I'll look for another job. You know, two weeks somewhere else. Tim, I'm scared. Now look at me. Scared? You don't mean that, honey. I don't know, Tim. All I know, all I'm sure of, is how much I love you. That's my hotcha girl. Flaming Flappers breaks box office records in key cities. Mercer signing new contract with Hannah Adams. Hannah Hotcha Adams, number one box office star of year. (laughs) 
Hey, what about it, Lou? How you doing with my call to Hollywood? Gee, Mr. O'Connor, you called her only the night before last. You mean you haven't even hey, tried to... Hey, hey, take it easy. Sure, I tried. Only it seems your wife isn't home. Oh. You don't want to speak to the maid, do you? What do you think? I think you want to speak to Mrs. O'Connor. Hey, that sounds like my cue. Keep trying, will you, Lou? And here he is again, folks, the man you've all been waiting for, Tim O'Connor! <laughs> I may be wrong, but I think you're wonderful. I may be wrong, but I think you're swell. I like your style, say, I think it's marvelous. I'm always wrong, so how can I tell? All of my shirts are unsightly. All of my ties are a crime If daring you I pick rightly It's the very first time You came along, say I think you're wonderful I think you're grand But I may be wrong Though your lot is sad I am just as as bad Mine is really quite a hopeless case. Oculus advise glasses for my eyes. With them, I'd find in you a perfect wife. I oh, good evening. Wrong, May I help you? I'm Mrs. O'Connor. Mrs. O'Connor? What? Well, you're Hannah you're Adams. <laughs> oh, just like wait till Tim knows you're here. Could you I find me a table, please, somewhere, somewhere out of the way? Oh, right this way, Mrs. O'Connor. So Thank you. How can I tell? Deuces to me, you're all aces. Life is to me just a bore. Faces are all open spaces. Why, you might be John Barrymore. You came to me, say, I think it's wonderful. I think you're grand, but I may be wrong. Oh, gee, I thought it was some kind of a gag when they told me that. Oh, baby, am I glad to see you. Tim, not in front of all these people. They're all looking at what us. What people? There's no one within a million miles of us. <laughs> That's the first time I ever got a hand for a kiss. <laughs> hey, but I thought you were in California. When did you get here? About half an hour ago. I took an airplane. Oh, darling, I just had sure, to. Sure, sure, I know. But what happened all of a sudden? What about the new picture? Aren't you starting it? Well, I was. Well, you mean you was? Well, I made them put it off. How? Well, I just told them I was going to have a baby. <laughs> oh, no, not again. Well, it worked, didn't it? I'm here. <laughs> oh, gee, what a day. I just couldn't stand it another minute, darling. Anyway, why do I have to keep on being a movie star? I want to be with you. Yeah, but this is not going to go on forever, baby. You still got that vacation coming, and maybe now I can get one, too, and then we'll go away together. We'll never go anywhere. Either you'll be working or I will. It's been that way for months, and for what? To build a trust fund so we can have the finest tombstones in Forest Lawn? Well, that's the only time we'll ever be together. Oh, sometimes, Tim, I wish those talking pictures would come in. Hey, uh, how about them, anyway? Oh, they sing a song or something, and the jazz singer it doesn't mean anything. It's just a... It's just a... What is it, honey? What's the matter? Oh, it's nothing. Nothing. Well, you look pale or something. Oh, I just feel dizzy all of a sudden. I'll bet you haven't eaten a thing. I'll get some hot coffee. Hey, Jack! No, 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 for... darling. No, no, I'm fine now, honestly. Now, look, honey, you... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There is something I'd like. Tim, do you know what I'd really like? No, what would you really like? A great big sour dill pickle. Well, I'll get a whole bowl of... <laughs> Hannah. Now, Hannah, girls just don't ask for dill pickles unless... I told unless... you I wasn't any good at making up excuses. Holy Moses, I'm a father. <laughs> and this time, folks, she ain't kidding either. After a brief intermission, we'll continue with Act Three of You're My Everything. 
I have chosen as our guest tonight Miss Marsha Walton, popular radio commentator, because her sprightly comments on fashion, celebrities, and first nights make her a welcome voice in your homes. What do you enjoy doing most in your work, Marsha? Well, for one thing, describing the Rose Parade in Pasadena every New Year's Day. And then, of course, handling the radio commentary for Hollywood First Nights. Oh, yes, you were the voice that described the Hollywood opening of Warner Brothers' production, The West Point Story. That's right. It was fun. But it wasn't exactly easy, with thousands of fans milling around the entrance trying to get a look at their favorite stars. I had to catch the stars of the picture for a few words. James Cagney, Virginia Mayo, Doris Day, and Gordon McRae. My early training in publicity helped there. And then I described what the girls were wearing. I assure you, they looked every bit as glamorous as they do on the screen. Uh, did you see the picture yourself? Well, not until the next night, but I enjoyed it thoroughly. Especially the songs and Virginia Mayo's dancing in the West Point Academy show. You know... I almost wondered how her sheer stocking stood the strain. Almost? Well, you and I both know, Mr. Kennedy. Virginia is a Lux fan, like so many of us in Hollywood. Hollywood's loveliest legs always wear nylons that get Lux care. Screen stars like Virginia Mayo and smart women everywhere insist on Lux for stockings, all their nice things. Runs come too quickly when stockings are washed with strong soap or rubbed with cake soap. Gentle Lux flakes actually makes nylons last twice as long. Strain tests prove it. No other way of washing makes nylons last longer. Lux has been a favorite of mine for years. Thank you, Marcia. Ladies, why don't you follow Hollywood's example? Give your precious nylons safe Lux care. Get twice the wear from every pair. You can see for yourself how lovely, how flawless Virginia Mayo's stockings look in the West Point story. Give your stockings all your nice things, that lovely Lux look. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Curtain rises on Act Three, starring Ann Baxter as Hannah and Phil Harris as Tim. Well, a lot of time has gone by, and a lot of things have happened. For one thing, Tim and Hannah have their baby. Only at age seven, Jane's hardly a baby anymore. For another thing, Hannah's no longer in the movies. Along came talkies, and out went Hannah. But if Hannah went out, Tim's come in. Yes, Tim O'Connor is now the biggest star at Superior Pictures. Pardon me, boy. Is this the Chattanooga Choo Choo? Track 29. Boy, you can give me a shot. Cause I can afford to boat the Chattanooga Choo Choo. I've got my fare And just a trifle to spare You leave the Pennsylvania station By the quarter to four Well, you read a magazine And then you in Baltimore Dinner in the diner Well, nothing could be finer Than to have your ham and eggs in Carolina When you hear the whistle blow And eight to the bar then you know that Tennessee is not very far. Shovel all the coal in, gotta keep a rolling. Boo, boo, Chattanooga, there you are. Cut, cut, that's it. That was great, Tim, great. All right, everybody, that's all for today. Stage five, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock. Oh, uh, before you go home, Tim, uh, stop over in the office, will you? Sure, sure. Anything wrong, Mr. Mercer? Oh, no, no, but some of our big exhibitors, well, uh, they're complaining about all these musicals. They're yelling for melodrama, serious stuff, and I just Who, thought... me? Melodrama? Me? Look, we'll talk about it later. Just don't worry about it. So, look, 
Look, uh, if it's okay with you, honey, I, I think I'll take Janie over to the studio tomorrow. Oh? Well, she gets such a kick out of watching me work. Not that I'm not the proud papa, but honey, you, you should see You wanted to miss it. school again, Tim. So she misses one day. It's not just that. Tim, you've got that child so spoiled already that all she thinks about is singing and dancing. What's so wrong about that? Don't you want her to be like other children? To know something besides movies? Tim, please. I'm not going to have her childhood spoiled. But what am I doing? Encouraging her. Teaching her your songs and dances. It just isn't right. Okay, honey. That's the way you feel. Only look. Don't be mad at me. Come here. Give me a kiss. Now, Tim, I'm serious. Sure, baby, I know. Look, besides, you're not going to have to worry about it much longer anyway, not according to Mercer. Mercer? Well, he says people just don't go to musicals anymore. They're fed up. They want drama. It's a cycle, honey. A couple of years from now, maybe it'll be musicals again. Who knows? But what'll this do to you? I'm a cook goose. And at last, I can do what I've always wanted to do. I'm getting out of pictures, baby. I'm going to be a farmer. A what? Well, why not? <gasps> now, look. We'll get ourselves a few acres out in the valley, build a swell little house, and we'll live that simple life. What do you say? Gee, it'll be swell for Janie. Tim, do you really mean this? Look, just get me out there with those cows and chickens, and you won't be able to drag me back. And as for these flickers, never heard of them. Oh, Tim, I'd love it. When? Well, I think we can start talking to those real estate operators, well, uh, say, uh, Saturday. Saturday? Oh, darling, I'm sorry I fussed at you like that. Well, you'd better be. Because I'm a got-to-be-treated right man what needs plenty of loving. Even more than plenty. Something like this? Mmm. More. Give the horses a good rub down, Johnny. They're pretty hot. Yes, sir, Mr. O'Connor. Had a good ride, huh, Jenny? Oh, yes. And give the horses a good rub down. They're pretty hot. <laughs> Look, big shot, I'll give the orders around there. Yes, sir. Hey, where do you suppose Mommy is? Don't you remember? She went shopping this morning. Oh, yeah, that's right. She went shopping. Pop, you know what I read in the Hollywood Reporter this morning? Musicals are coming back. They are, huh? Alexander's ragtime band just broke the house record at the Roxy. You don't say. Well, you can stop hinting, see? Because I'm through in pictures. I'm a farmer. Some farmer. Well, whatever I am, that's what I'm going to stay, understand? Just mention it, Pop. And you know what I saw in Variety? Well? Bobby Graves is in the hospital. He's got appendicitis. Imagine, nine years old and he catches appendicitis. Hey, he just started his picture last Monday. What'll they do? Well, what can they do? That kid's a star. They'll have to shelve it, of course. That's tough on the studio, honey. You know, uh, that's the same studio where Mom and I used to work. Gee, I suppose there's no telling when he'll be out either. Well, what are we worrying about the studio for? Come on, look, let's drive into town and pick out something nice to send to Bobby, and then we... Wait a minute. Yeah, Pop? While we're there... While we're in town... Well? I think maybe we'll stop by the studio, uh... See Mr. Mercer, maybe. Something tells me you're thinking about something. Just an idea, kid. Your old man has just got a sensational idea. Well, what are we waiting for, partner? Go on over to the car and I'll leave a note for Mom. Oh, now, just a second, darling. Just catch your breath and say that over again. I'm in the movies, Mommy. I'm in the movies. That's where we've been at the studio. Darling, do you mind playing outside for a few minutes? I'd like to talk to Daddy alone. Well, sure, Mommy, but gosh, aren't you excited? Oh, boy, wait till I tell the mom. Tim? It was just a hunch I had, baby, and it worked. Henry Mercer's nuts about her. Look, the part's for a boy, see, but I got Mercer to change it to a girl. And not only that, I talked him into giving me a bit part. You see, there's an old, old southern butler in there, and that way I was going to be on the set and I was going to help Janie. Don't you and... think you might have talked to me about it first? But I didn't know about it first. It was just a gamble, baby. Mercer might have said no. You know and... how I feel about Jane and working in pictures. Tim, you promised me. But I thought you'd be tickled to death. After all, the picture business never did us any harm. You know as well as I do what it'll mean. 
Long hours, rehearsals, costume fittings, posing for publicity, people chasing after every minute. I just don't want that for her. But Janie's got real talent. You just can't take... I've tried to keep her sweet and simple like other children, but you, you just egg her on. Well, I... I didn't know you were going to feel this strong about it. Gee, it puts me in an awful spot. Look, honey, Mercer's got the whole studio turned upside down. They're rewriting the script, then they're going to... Then... I'm sorry, baby. I, I guess I just didn't stop to think. Oh, Tim, if I could just be sure it'd just be this one picture. Look, I'll give you my word, honey. I won't ever mention it again. I cross my heart and hope to die. All right, Tim. You win. You pretty thing. Kiss me. You big mug. <laughs> I thought I'd drive out and tell you the good news, Tim. I ran a rough cut of Janie's picture last night in New York. Yeah, yeah. Every adjective in the book, Tim. A real smash. No kidding. Chip off the old block, huh? But listen, you ham. You never could hold a candle to this kid. She's good. Ouch. Well, uh, they want her back east for the opening in Boston. That means you and Hannah. Tim, did I just tip? Well, hello, Henry. Hannah. Well, I just dropped by to tell you that everybody's crazy about Janie's picture. Oh, and incidentally, not that money means anything to you farmers, but uh, naturally we want to do a little better on the next one. Well, it is filthy stuff, but we'll next worry one. along with... Another picture? Oh, no. No, I thought you understood that, Henry. Understood what? W what about our contract, the options? What options? Tim, you promised me. Of course me. I did, baby, but no studio makes a contract without options. Then you knew all along. Oh, for the love of Pete, this is something Janie loves. It's in her blood. I'm sorry, Henry, but Jane is not going to make any more pictures. Well, this is a fine time to tell me. What am I supposed to say to New York? I don't know. Perhaps Tim has some suggestions. Well, Hannah, wait, wait, please. Let her go, let her go. I got something to say about this. Well, you better make it good with the mood she's in. Don't worry. Look, you mind waiting? I'll go upstairs and settle this right now. You deliberately lied to me, Tim, going behind my back and signing that contract. Well, what if I did? She's my child, too, you know. And fine care you take of her, making her work all week in that slush and those wind machines till she almost came down with pneumonia. Pneumonia? She sneezes a couple of times and you build it up till she's, uh... Oh, for the love of Mike. Well, it's not going to happen again, Tim, even if I have to... Have to what? Even if I have to take her away from here. You'll take Janie nowhere. Now, wait a minute, Tim. Hannah, what's gotten into you? I used to think that you had a brain, but the way you're acting now, Jane I... Jane and I are leaving on the first plane for Boston. Oh, that's fine. Going home to Mother, huh? I haven't seen that since your last picture. You out of your mind. I'd like to know who's going to stop us. Look, if you walk out of this house, Hannah, you know what that means, don't you? I know exactly what it means. So if you'll excuse me, Tim, I'm going to find Jane. Well, here are the afternoon papers, Hannah. Or have you seen them already? No, not yet, Aunt Jane. Take a look at this. Gala world premiere of Rebel and Crinoline at Royale Theatre tonight. Boston Society and Civic Leaders to pay tribute to Donna... Oh, that's very nice, isn't it? I haven't been this excited since the day you and Tim were married... Sorry. Where's our movie star? Oh, she's upstairs taking a bath. And calm down. We don't have to be at the theater till 8 o'clock. Any mail? No. You'd, you'd think he'd wire or write or something. Today of all days, at, at least to Jane. I don't suppose you've written to him either. Why should I be the first one to write? No, no reason. None of my business. As long as you're both so happy. Well, if... If anybody calls, I'll be upstairs breaking. Oh, what a family. Well, a fine thing, I must say. The world premiere of my grandniece's picture goes on, and here we are, sitting out in the lobby again. It's just that I'm so nervous, Aunt Jane. Gosh, all those important people in there. What if they don't like it? Don't you worry, darling. They love it. Can't you be just as nervous in our reserved seats as here? 
I guess so, Aunt Jane. Come on, Mother. Whatever you say, dear. It's a pretty corny picture if you ask me. Nobody asked you. Well, we'll see all of the finale anyway. That's when Pop's the old Southern butler, Aunt Jane. Gee, he's just wonderful in that number. That, I'd say, remains to be seen. Oh, I'll never forgive either of you sitting in the lobby and me with an orchid. Can I show you to your seats, Miss Adams? No, thanks. I'm sure we can find them. Look at Pop, Aunt Jane. Look at him. Steamboat on the Mississippi River. And me and you, we's gonna go down yonder to New Orleans and then fetch your daddy. Really, Uncle Mary? Sure we will. Sure. Now, you just close your pretty eyes and go to sleep, because cause I done promised your daddy I was gonna take care of you. Good night, Uncle Matt. Good night, honey. And now is what we dream about, Aunt Jane. Oh. It's a sweet trip to the candy shop where bonbons play. On the sunny beach at Peppermint Bay. Lemonade stands everywhere. Cracker Jack. Bands fill the air. There you are, happy landing on the chocolate bar. Now see the sugar bowl, do a tootsie roll with the big fat devil food cake. And if you eat too much, ooh, ooh, you'll awake with a tummy ache on the good ship lollipop. It's an all night trip into bed, you hop. With this command, all aboard, all aboard for, for Candyland. Candy Get on the good ship, lollipop it was sweet. Come on, darling, picture's almost over. Mr. Mercer will be waiting backstage. Bum, bum, you better come to Aunt Jane. On the sunny beach of Peppermint Bay. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Superior Studios, thank you for the manner in which you have received our picture. And now it gives me great pleasure to bring you someone I'm sure that you here in Boston are very proud of, little Jane O'Connor. That's your cue, darling. Just walk out there and make your little speech. Knock him dead, sweetheart. Well, well, here goes. Hey, so you think she's good too, huh? Tim! Well, I got here sooner, baby, but I... I didn't get your telegram. Telegram? Until... What telegram? I can't hear a word that child's saying out there. Well, the wire you sent but me. I didn't send any wire. Of course you sent a wire. Watch this. Well, you wanted him back, didn't you? Well, yes, but I... And you've got him, haven't you? Now, wait a minute. You, too. You wanted to come, didn't you? Well, sure, but not if Hannah didn't want oh, me. Oh, be and... quiet. I got both of you into this mess in the first place, and I'm going to see that you don't get out of it. Well, go on, you, you actor, you. Either hit her or kiss her. And so, once again, thank you very much, and good night. Well, I got through it all right. Daddy! Hiya, partner. Oh, Daddy, we missed you so much. Thank you, honey. And please, I don't know how you feel, but let's don't ever go through this again. Don't you worry, little missy. From now on, the Confederates and the Yankees plain love each other. And ain't nobody gonna do no seceding from nobody nowhere. No time. No man. Now we want you to meet our stars, and Mr. Keeley has some interesting news for you about next week's show. But first, here's big news about Lux Flakes Holiday Value Sale. Listen to this. A big, beautiful, floral-designed tablecloth in pure white, genuine, long-lasting plastic for just 50 cents. It's worth every bit of a dollar and 50 cents, but you get it for just 50 cents with only two box tops from Lux Flakes. It's full size, about 54 by 54 inches, 
perfect for your din dinette or kitchen table, especially children's meals. It wipes clean instantly with a damp cloth. This offer is good for a limited time only, so order yours now. Get several, they make wonderful gifts. Your grocer has handy order blanks. For each floral plastic tablecloth you order, send 50 cents and two box tops to Lux, Box 16, New York 46. Allow three weeks for delivery. That's Lux, Box 16, New York 46, New York. Now, here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. Now we follow our usual custom of bringing our stars forward to the footlights for a well-deserved bow, and here they are, Ann Baxter and Phil Harris. Phil, we want to say an especial thanks to you for stepping in at the last moment when Dan Daly was taken ill. Well, it was an honor to get to do it, Bill. Phil, you are wonderful. Thank you. And we're certainly glad to see you playing a nice actress again. <laughs> you mean after the conniving one I played in All About Eve. Daryl Zanuck and 20th Century Fox must be mighty proud of your performance, Anne. You know, it's something that not every actress could do. Oh, now, Phil, that's too much. But I'll tell you one thing all actresses do. They use Lux Flakes. They're a must in my home. And we have plenty for you both to take home with you. Hold it, Clyde. <laughs> I know Alice wants the flakes, but how about that Lux beauty soap? That's for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, lover boy, we'll take care of you. <laughs> and what else is going on out of 20th? Well, just to keep things in even balance, we have another great picture, this time about an angel. Starring Clifton Webb and Edmund Gwen. Now, just a minute, Anne. Clifton Webb, an angel? That's it, Bill. He's an angel who comes to Earth as a cowboy. In the picture, <laughs> for heaven's sake. Well, for heaven's sake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm surprised you've never played a singing cowboy, Phil. Just because he can sing doesn't mean he can ride. I can't so ride. Everyone says I sit a horse superlatively. Now, how... <laughs> How about that time we all went fox hunting? You certainly looked superlatively foolish. Well, then. gosh, honey, how was I supposed to know that when you see the fox, you're supposed to holler, tally-ho, instead of bingo? <laughs> <laughs> it figures, Clyde. It just figures. Okay, okay. <laughs> and what are you figuring on for next week, Bill? Next week, we'll have a tender romance, a picture that was filled with comedy, drama, and splendid performances. It's apartment for Peggy. And as our stars... Gene Crane and Edmund Gwen from the original cast, co-starring with William Lundigan in this appealing story from 20th Century Fox. I wouldn't miss it, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night, and come back soon. Here's a beauty tip from the world's most glamorous women. Hollywood screen stars say active lather facials with Lux Soap keep their complexions just right for camera close-ups. Lovely Ruth Hussey uses this gentle care regularly. She says, Lux is a real beauty soap. I wouldn't be without it a single day. When you see Ruth Hussey on the screen, notice the smooth perfection of her skin. Tomorrow, try her simple Lux Soap care. Work the rich lather well in, rinse with warm water, finish with a quick cold rinse. Now, pat your face dry with a soft towel. Then, look in your mirror and be delighted with the fresh new beauty you see there. See for yourself why nine out of ten screen stars use fragrant white Lux Toilet Soap. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theatre presents Gene Crane, Edmund Gwen, and William Lundigan in Apartment for Peggy. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Heard in our cast tonight were Janet Scott as Aunt Jane, Norma Jean Nilsson as Jane, Joe Kearns as Blanton, and Ed Begley, Bill Johnstone, Ruth Parrott, Larry Dobkin, Charlotte Lawrence, June Whitley, 
Stanley Farrar, George Neese, and Eddie Marr. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Rudy Schrager. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Apartment for Peggy, starring Gene Crane, Edmund Gwen, and William Lundigan. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.